Well, hello again and welcome back to my channel and this short follow on video from my recent unboxing and assembly of the Trend Workshop router table. Now, today we are specifically going to be looking at this, the brand new Trend T14 and getting this installed into the router table itself. Now, recently you may have seen a lot of noise, if you like, being made about this product and its brother, the T12. So why actually is that? Well, this is Trend's response into the new legislation that came into place for the safe use of routers. Now, without boring you as quick as I can, what is that legislation? At the end of last year, new international legislation came into place around the key health and safety feature in regards to design of a router. In essence, all newly manufactured routers need to contain an inbuilt kill switch. So in the event of a power cut, when the power comes back on, the router won't just automatically restart itself. That's pretty much it. Well, I hope that's made some kind of sense, but as ever, if you need to know a little bit more about this kind of stuff, don't take some random bloke off YouTube's word for it. You need to do your own homework on this kind of thing. So what's Trend's solution to this new legislation? Well, they have replaced the outgoing T11 with the T12 and the T14. So which one do you go for? And this boils down to predominantly, how do you use a router? So for example, if you are handheld routing for 90% of the time with the occasional router table use, then it needs really to be the T12. If it's the other way around, if your intended use is predominantly for a router table with maybe the occasional handheld use, then really you should be looking at the T14. Difference mainly being is how you restart it up because if your power kills and you've got a T12 mounted to a router table, you need to get underneath there to kind of unkill the kill switch if you like before you can start using it again. Whereas the T14 comes with this, which is an MVR style switch that can be mounted actually fixed, sorry, into the T14 itself. Well, how did he do that? Well, the designer was clearly a fan of Robocop 2 and particularly the character Ed 209 because in the handle, when you can pull it back, you will find this. And yes, if you've seen the film, you'll know exactly what I'm on about. And this MVR style switch fixes into there so you have complete control of the router from a switch just on the side of your router table. Now I did speak to Trend last week because I was a little bit confused myself when I done the, uh, the unboxing and assembly video. What this does is it negates the use for an MVR switch. So you don't need an MVR switch if you're deciding to go for a T14. And just on a personal note as well, I actually prefer that kind of design of kill switch, MVR style switch, if you like, as opposed to this one. Because, in my humble opinion, using that one, you don't need to look away from what you're actually doing because you can actually feel for it. And also, actually, you can knock it with your knee or your hip. So I think that's much better, particularly for one-handed woodworker like myself, than the old traditional style MVR switch. It's only on a personal point, by the way. Also, the actual mounts that come with the WRT, the workshop router table, will take this switch as well, which comes from the T14. So yeah, I think we've pretty much covered everything on that. All we're gonna look at today is getting this mounted to the actual router plate and then getting this fixed onto the table. Might just fire it up, just double check that it's working all right. And let's see how we get on with that.
And I think we're gonna leave it there for this one. Uh, just a couple of bits and pieces. I mounted the switch on the left-hand side, obviously only working with my left hand, but you know, I think most people will probably wanna put it onto the right. Uh, thank you to one of my subscribers, David. I think it's David Hull, who uh, told me about the record, uh, 100 meter to 57 millimeter reducer. Uh, and I've ordered one, David, so it's coming from Yandles, hopefully in the next couple of days. In the meantime, a bit of tape and one that doesn't fit properly just for test purposes. Oh yeah, and um, when I was putting the brackets on, it I thought like a, a packer just fitted perfectly in between and uh, I could screw it in that way, so it just made it easier for me. Uh, the next uh, in line for this will be uh, first impressions of the router, working with the router table itself. It's going to be a little while, that one. Uh, so I was going to say hold your breath, but uh, I couldn't do that much at the moment. So I, I need some time, basically. Um, uh, follow up from last thing, if you're interested, I was uh, back for some more tests, seeing the doctors and stuff at the end of last week. And uh, yeah, this, the pattern they're seeing is up to 12 weeks um, for this to kind of clear. It's been about five or six weeks for me now uh, with the breathing problems. So and I get, I get up and I feel okay. And then I'm shattered by like late morning, early lunch. I've done this over two days. I'm trying to do continuity with clothes and her, well, her never has continuity. But, uh, so yeah, I get tired really, really quickly and short of breath very quick as well. So, but I'm still wanting to pot around and being sensible. And thank you, Ed. Uh, and other folk for reminding me what I you know, need to take it a bit easy and stuff. But And I am, uh, but I'm trying to get that fine line between pottering around doing bits and pieces and going stir crazy doing absolutely nothing because obviously I'm, I'm off work at the moment as well. Uh, but anyway, that's enough for me. Um, so yeah, it's gone in really well. It, it looks great. Uh, just one little test cut with it. I'll be really interested to see uh, what it's capable of when I'm feeling a little bit more capable myself. So uh, as ever, everyone, uh, take care and look after yourselves uh, and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.